John Chris Church out of the Northwest Territories is driving the number 404 Sabre Sport entry, taking over for Wes Jones during the international tour and for a couple of select races once we head back to North America. In every race up until this point, he has had a grid penalty. Otherwise, he would have qualified third in Olton Park and second in Malaga. But I'm sure it still came as a big surprise to a lot of the paddock that he grabbed the pole for the race here at Calder. He's down and away. Mark Hankins with a little bit of trouble getting up through the gears, it looks like. Jerry Guerra on the inside to second as Chris Church pulls out to a three-car length lead. There are four full-time Aussie competitors in the Hark series, and three of them are in this race. Two of them, in fact, started in the top five. Zayden Davidson holding on to fourth in the number nine machine, while just ahead, it's Zachary Fitzwater Sr. in that sporty black and red Wilson security scheme special just for this event. Henrietta Fitzwater drove a similar scheme in race number one. Lap three in the books, Zane Davidson up to a podium spot, got by Fitzwater Sr. the last time around, and now powers by Jerry Guerra in the number 71. He's going after the 404 of Chris Church for the lead. He's so far been on challenge, tries to throw the block, heading into three now. The yellow flag is out, so we're racing back. Davidson up the inside. Can he make the pass before we hit the line? Not quite. Chris Church leads the lap by less than a hundredth of a second as Zayden Davidson is going to be one to watch on the restart. Jeffrey Fingai has been dealing with a bit of an ill-handling race car lately. It seems when it's not mechanical failures, it's something else. As he gets into the wall there, comes down the track, gets into Intivia Kingray. That sends Ike Durbin around. Andy Thomas and Joshua Sikuli pile in. Let's take another look at that. Ike Durbin just minding his own business there in the 86, racing with Intivia Kingray for that spot, gets clobbered by the 92. Luckily it was so far back in the field, otherwise that would have been a lot worse. Thomas got the worst of it. One of the three Australians in this race is already out, uh, gonna go out of the race from this. Sikuli has some damage as well. He will stick with it, as will Ike Durbin. While we were settling in under the caution flag, a stack-up accordion gone wrong sent Skyla Johnson into the back of Tony Green. Of course an incident like that would happen to Tony Green. The man cannot catch a break, and now he has damage on the rear end yet again of his own doing. Tony Green elects to keep that car on the racetrack. In fact, the only cars to pit under this yellow were those who were damaged in the incident that brought out the caution itself. Jim Gambit would lose a crankshaft coming down the back straight. That would be it for the driver, the number 44. Chris Church leads him back. Crasta and Fitzwater Sr. jump to the outside here on Zayden Davidson. It'll be interesting to see whether this works out for them too well. The inside so far has been the preferred way to make a pass here. Demir Bejenov, the points leader, reporting a problem with the number 13, he's got a tire down. He's in the pits right now, and he will likely lose a lap or two as a result. Colin McGovern started fourth on that restart, and Matthew Engelram now up into the top five. Those guys making their way into the picture here. Here comes the number nine of Zayden Davidson, trying to make his home country proud. Today has made his way up to second in the opening few laps, and it's no surprise, less than two laps after the restart, that he's going to snap the lead away from the 404 of John Christchurch, and it turns three and four. Sidney Crest in the $21 General Chrysler is going to get into second with a pass in turn number one. Tony Green finds himself in a gaggle of cars racing for 15th place. It appears his performance hasn't been affected by that damage too much. Oh, wow, what a save by the number 32 of Tony Green there. He got into the back of Caitlin Sang after Sang checked up, trying to avoid the number 85. And Green showing once again that it's not his talent holding him back. It's that he doesn't have the luck to match. Last year's race winner, Carl and Dumian likely hasn't changed a thing on the setup of that car and it's still lightning quick making his way into the top six now he'll be one to watch as the race moves forward Christian Hartono like usual is charging his way through the field he's nearly cracked the top ten 
as he drives by Robert Piet in the 82 on the low side. Sidney Krasta could get to the back of the number nine and hold station but was unable to make a pass and John Christchurch is on the charge once again. He's back by for second place and I'm sure he'll be all over the tailgate of the number nine soon enough. Demir Bejanov, the points leader, about to go a second lap down. Things not looking too good for the Kazakh. How about Freddy Munoz, nearly inside the top five? He's been showing some speed today. He's had a pretty quiet season. He's only got one top ten to his name at Concord. His four DNFs haven't really looked too good on his resume, but... Uh, I mean, if he can keep up the speed he's showing here today, he'll be one to watch in the second half of his rookie campaign. Couple of wily veterans, Tristan Wilhoyt and Jeffrey Fingai, racing side by side for position near the tail of the field. Tristan Wilhoyt driving that brand new Denali Chase that the team unveiled for the second half of the season. A beautiful black and green scheme on that GCI car. Oh man, as Blake Camphausen checked up off the corner, Wilhoit was all out of shape there, came down into Finguy. Finguy's all right, he drove off without any problems. Sekuli also got a bit of a piece. Uh, Wilhoit with a bit of front end damage. Like I said, slick new scheme, but uh, darn, not too slick on the racetrack today. That'll be the second yellow. The entire field down pit road under the caution flag. Not too much of a change up front. It's still Zayden Davidson leading. Sydney Krasta up to second with a quick pit stop by her crew. John Christchurch pushed back to third. We should be good to go as far as fuel till the end of the race. If we get a long green flag stint, tires will get rough though. On the green flag, everyone stays in line, at least those for those top three or four cars. I think they learned their lesson from last time. Everybody that jumped to the high side experienced some sort of initial loss there. And Zayden Davidson, again down and away. John Christchurch is going to have to get by the 21 before he challenges the 9. Rookie road course rivals Caitlin Sang and Lucas Knight running side by side for fourth position. They just went around the outside of... 2016 race winner Carlin Dumian. They're showing that they've got what it takes on the ovals as well. And that's going to be particularly important in the second half of the season. We may have had three straight road courses, but we've only got maybe two or three road courses for the entire remainder of the season. How about Sydney Krasta? New tires, and she's got something for the nine of Zayden Davidson. Up the inside, heading into three, and she will snap the lead away from him. John Christchurch providing a little bit of background support there by running the nine way up the track as the 404 understeer there down into three. Here comes Christchurch again. Up the inside of the number 21. Looks like he's going to make the move down in turn number three. Lucas Knight into a podium spot, but the pole sitter, Chris Church, again showing that he might have the car to beat. Hello, Carlin Dumin. He's, he stuffs it up the inside of Lucas Knight. He's to the inside of leader John Chris Church as well. It's that kind of no-holds-barred driving style that has gotten Carlin Dumian in trouble a couple of times this season. But if you can hold it in a straight line and keep it off of his fellow competitors, it would not at all be a surprise to see him back in victory lane this year. Battle on for third as well. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. up the inside of Sidney Crass in the 21. Lucas Knight caught up there on the outside. Groovy might be passed by a couple of cars, but holy moly is he making the outside work. Probably carried 10 miles an hour more than his fellow competitors there. And he's going to try to hold on to third best he can. But Zachary Fitzwater looks like he's going to get it on the inside. Here comes Zayden Davidson with the move underneath the 21 and both of the Aussies back inside the top four. New challenger emerging here. That's Caden Van Evenhoven in the number 81. He started 31st, but has silently made his way through the field in this first half of the race. Zayden Davidson holding him up a little bit there as Fitzwater goes after Carlin Dumian for second. It's good to see these three guys, Tony Green, John Arndt, and Robert Piet, 
racing for spots nearly inside the top 10. Robert Piet hasn't had too many good finishes since his championship bid back in the 2016 season. I remember him getting a top six back at Watkins Glen, but that's about it as far as highlights for his season. John Arndt looked really strong in the first few races of the year, nearly won at Brasstown Bald before throwing it away due to a rookie mistake, and hasn't had a top 10 since Concord. Tony Green, of course, legendary for his mechanical failures and for getting crashed out, usually not of his own doing. The kids might just eat free at Golden Corral yet, though, if he can get his first top 10 of the season. Fitzwater Sr. in the Wilson Security Scheme. Looking down low on the number 404, he's got Caden Van Evenhoven all over him. Holy cow, Zayden Davidson flying in there like a rocket in the number 9 machine. He's going to get second, it looks like, and the crowd goes wild for these front two Aussies. The only two Aussies left in the field running 1-2. How about that? Things not really settling down here. Got some crazy racing for 10th place here. Three, sometimes nearly four wide for position. William Brock's usually one of these guys that's just trying to make it through the race, but uh, apparently he's giving it his all as well. And the number four machine, he's going to be the big gainer on that as Angle Ram uh, appears to be the big loser up on the top side of the racetrack. Now Sidney Krasta trying to get the lead from Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Leaves him a lot of room up there on the top side. Interesting call there by the driver, the number 21. But uh, hey, I can't tell her what to do when she's got that sort of rhythm going easily by the 59. A couple of car lengths advantage already. Caden Van Evenhoven showing that he continues to exist by hounding the rear end of the number 21. Now looks down low. Uh, down the back straight, Krasta trying to cover him off, can't quite get there. 81 keeps his nose in, huge pack behind these guys battling for third, my god. But uh, it's been a pretty unnotable year for the 81, a win would certainly change that in a real hurry. Still three wide for that third spot just behind Chris Church and Carlin Dumian, along with Lucas Knight racing for that spot, Lucas Knight backs out of that was getting a little bit sketchy there down the back straight with Chris Church moving down the racetrack toward and Dumian and Dumian's going to stick into third right now Zayden Davidson a little bit impatient behind the 404 really up his rear there into turn number one gave him a little bit of space now now trying to get a big run on exit oh he gets into the 404 and Chris Church has to save the car, gets into Lucas Knight. That's what Knight was trying to avoid, and suddenly he had a face full of it. Uh, and they all managed to keep going in a straight line. Great job by those drivers to keep this race in green flag conditions without any, uh, any problems. That could have been huge. Henry Williams and William Brock have snuck their way into the top ten. As I said earlier, Brock usually just tries to stay out of trouble, but he, he seems to be giving it a go today. And uh, Henry Williams, nice run in the AC Delco number eight. Caden Van Evenhoven is over a second in front of second place Sidney Krasta, setting a blistering pace from the race lead. And the other members of the top five have taken note. They're running single file. I think they realize that they're going to have to work together and they're going to have to really fight hard to catch that number 81. Best of the rest back there in the pack is Christian Hartono in the number 24. He's charged his way up to that spot. Seems to really have something for these guys on the long runs. It seems just racing around Tony Green leads to an increase in bad luck. And for the second year in a row, Prudence Littlejohn has some sort of engine failure here at Calder Park. Last year, it was a cylinder down that took her out of the contention for the 2016 Hart Can-Am Series Championship. And this year, it's something much worse, it appears, that's going to take her behind the wall for sure. And that's really unfortunate for the cash strap Kip Pit Motorsports effort as they struggle to complete the international tour. It took a while, but the 21 of Sydney Krasta has finally caught the 81 of Van Evenhoven, and she's now going for a pass on the bottom of the racetrack. This is pretty good news for third on back as well. They need this kind of racing to have a shot at catching up in these final 20 laps. 
Since Tavolaris got the grid penalty, he seems to be turning over a new leaf. He's not running well by any means. He's currently in 35th spot, not exactly a career effort out there. But at the same time, that car's in one piece, which is more than you can say about many of his efforts so far this season. He always drives in over his head, especially over his experience level in these cars, which was little to none before coming into Hark, and that's gotten him into trouble time and time again. He, he always wrecks his car in the early going, and that's pretty much it. That's led to him being 84th in points, even behind drivers that have somehow have more DNFs than him. So to see him out there just making sure he can competently race is good to see, because a competent racer is the first step in towards being a fast racer, so we'll have to see whether or not Tavolaris can progress to that stage by the end of the season. Sydney Krasta continues to lead. We're closing in on 10 laps to go, but all of the top 10 right now are single file. Everyone trying to save some tires, I think, as no one wants a blowout with two laps to go when they're trying to challenge for the race lead. Lucas Knight thinks it's time to go. He takes a peek on Carlin Dumian for third place, and here comes Caden Van Evenhoven with a charge, and the number 21 can't make anything stick right now, or at least chooses not to force the issue. It's been a rough day for Skyla Johnson. She came into this race third in points, but has been well off the pace for most of it. She's trying to get by Tavolaris and Will Hoyt to salvage something from this day. Tavolaris gave her a wide berth, but Skyla Johnson blows up in turn number four. She's bringing that car down pit road to retire it, and for once, it might not be entirely Fingai Saitomi's bad engineering. She could have gotten radiator damage from running into the back of Tony Green under yellow, which means that the number of casualties from running behind Tony Green rises to two. Here comes Van Evenhoven. Krasta had to check up a little bit excessively into the corner. Got a little bit tight on her there. And Van Evenhoven up the inside, but here comes Lucas Knight on both of them, trying to get him. Watch out for warm tires, boys, but they make it. Stick, Van Evenhoven to the lead, through the middle. Lucas Knight has to fall in just behind, and Krast is still stuck on the top of the racetrack. Fitzwater Sr. sitting there in fourth. He could very well have a shot at his first win in his home race. Lucas Knight with an easy pass on Van Evenhoven. Van Evenhoven looked like he was trying to arc it through the corner, but that, ooh, that did not work at all. And here comes Krasta and Fitzwater Sr. trying to take advantage. Can't quite do it just yet. Lucas Knight struggling to try and get that car turned. Had to check up off the corner and Krasta nearly clips the 8 car on the way by. See you later. Goes Sydney Krasta easily gets the spot heading into 3. Coming to six to go, and Knight is still right behind the number 21 of Krasta, but they now have company. It's Zachary Fitzwater Sr. in the 59 to the high side. Carlin Dumian down low in the one machine. He knows how to win it in these final few laps on worn tires. He'll be one to watch, but here comes John Christchurch up the outside of Carlin Dumian, now to the inside of the 59. Lucas Knight makes a move for the lead, and John Christchurch from 15th just 10 laps ago is now inside the podium and it looks like he's here to stay because here he comes up the inside of the 21 of Sidney Krasta. All of these leaders are catching Ike Durbin in the 86. How will he influence this final run to the finish? Only one way to find out, I suppose. Chris Church with a big run off of turn two, three and a half to go this time. Where is Durbin gonna go? Where can he go to get out of the way of these leaders? Chris Church sweeps in front with the lead. He's been awfully strong, seemed to save his stuff in the later section of the race, but my God, what a charge to the front he had in the last 10 or so laps. Chris Church is by the 86, the eight car washing up the track a little bit, has to check up, and that's gonna really dampen his performance down the back straightaway. 10 car length lead. Chris Church now has on the eight and the rest of the field who battle hard behind Ike Durbin. 
Less than two laps of the Thunderdome remaining for John Christchurch, trying to get his first win and only his fourth Hark start. But he really butchered the exit to that corner, and here comes Lucas Knight down to the bottom. Christchurch trying to squeeze him down, but has a lot of trouble keeping the car down there through turns three and four. And Lucas Knight still there, still side by side, coming to the line, white flag in the air, and it's pretty much dead even between the two. Who's going to set the faster lap this time around? Chris Church again squeezes him down. Tries to get a good arc through the corner. They're both terribly slow through the corner. And here comes Zachary Fitzwater Sr. to the bottom of the racetrack. Trying to get it from both of them. Kane Van Evenhoven is there with him. And Fitzwater's going to make it stick on the bottom of the track. Zachary Fitzwater Sr. will get his very first Hark win in front of his home crowd. Driving a special scheme. The Wilson Security number 59. Wow, what a finish that just was for him. That'll be one that he'll remember for a very long time. A great moment for the 59 team. He was formerly tied for the most prolific Hark racer without a victory. That's only going to make this one that much sweeter. Welcome to Victory Lane, Zachary Fitzwater Sr. Let's take another look at that. With two laps to go, he was over a second back, and even at the white flag, he was half a second still behind those top two, but they were so focused on racing each other for that spot, and so slow through turn two as a result, that Fitzwater Sr. and Van Evenhoven were able to slice through them at down in turns three and four. Incredible that Fitzwater Sr. still had enough tires to make that work. Amazing driving by him to do so. And Fitzwater Sr. will take the victory as a result at his home race here at Calder Park in Australia. It's a close second place finish for BC native Lucas Knight, who just couldn't quite cover off Fitzwater on that final lap and comes just short of his second win of the season as a result. Third place goes to Caden Van Evenhoven, who is the hard charger, moving up 28 spots from where he started, and he also narrowly comes home with the most laps led bonus. Van Evenhoven led 21 laps, compared to 20 laps led by John Christchurch and Zayden Davidson, and 17 laps led by Sidney Krasta. Fourth place was the pole sitter, John Christchurch. Awesome drive in his first start without a starting grid penalty, but it showed that nerves get the best of all of us in the end. Fifth place finish goes to Carl and Dumi in the 2016 race winner. Great recovery run for him after the last few rounds where he's faced some turmoil and uh, a little bit of controversy. Sixth place goes to Sydney Krasta who led with just a few laps to go but just couldn't quite close the deal on her first win. Fitzwater winning leaves Krasta, Tristan Wilhoit, and Bill Littlejohn is the only full-time competitor since 2015 to not win a race. Seventh place goes to Hartono, Christian Hartono, the Indonesian, whose incredible consistency once again moves him up the point standings. It was a very quiet P8 to Tyler Faber. I don't think I even talked about him all day long. It was a similar story for Robert Piat, who finished ninth. And rounding out the top ten was the other finishing Australian, Zayden Davidson, who really proved his worth, but came up a bit short on the finish he deserved in the final laps. There's been some pretty big changes at the front of the standings. Demir Bejenov, the points leader coming in, had a 38th place finish. DJ Curtis was just a few points back of the Kazakh entering this race, and yet another consistent finish by the Missouri native gives him a 73 point advantage with 10 rounds to go. Nick Pericles, fourth place finish in race number one, puts him second in points, with Bejenov delegated to third. Matthew Engelram jumps to fourth in the standings, with Christian Hartono now inside the top five. Sang falls to sixth place in the standings with a mediocre 20th place run, while Skyla Johnson experiences the biggest loss by far with her engine failure, falling to seventh place in points over a round worth back of DJ Curtis. The series heads to Japan for the next round, where eight one-off drivers will join the 84 Hark regulars for a pair of races at the low-banked, egg-shaped 2.5-kilometer oval at Twin Ring Motegi.